Hello YouTube, it's the Codinator here. Doing a playthrough on Project X, and you've probably never heard of it, and that is because it does not exist. Well, okay, it exists. But this is a game of my own creation. I have uh, got into the world of game programming uh, with Unity. And uh, this is my very first game. So uh, this is a pre-alpha um, 0.0.3. .0 I am working on a multiplayer version, um, which uh, is pretty far along. I just need to get uh, my friends to help me test it. So what you are going to see is the single player version and uh, you can see here that uh, I have a nice opening scene with a menu. Um, we can select all sorts of things. Uh, audio level, option, uh, as far as graphics go, um, all that good stuff. Uh, but this is pretty much a, a static scene. It's not dyna dynamic or anything, but I do have some objects like that ship that's doing a flyby for us. Um, you can see that uh, we can adjust the resolution to and the quality um, to incorporate different LODs. So we're going to go ahead, purpose of the recording, do everything in as high as fidelity as we can here. So without further ado, let's go ahead Emergency and hop right in. Initiated. Room oxygen at 23% and falling. Commander, you are in zero G. You need to turn on your RCS busters. So obviously, a lot of this stuff is placeholder, right? I mean, I just have a a, a brick wall of text uh, telling you, giving you some basic controls. Um, the first RCS thing we need to do online. is uh, turn on the uh, RCS thrusters so that we can move because we are in zero G. Commander, suit resources are needed to sustain life. Please find and equip oxygen, RCS fuel and power for your suit. Commander, make sure to put on your helmet before activating the airlock. Helmet on. Okay, well I was kind of planning on initially having there be no indicators as far as uh, um, thrusters or battery charge or anything like that until you actually equip your helmet and kind of have like a, a HUD that's on the helmet screen. Um, obviously a lot of this stuff is, is placeholder, but uh, I didn't want... Um, I didn't want to make it any more complicated than it needed to be in this very first iteration. So the objective here is um, to collect these different modules that one powers our suit. You can see the, the green bar down on the right. Um, that is how much suit power we have. And if we run out of power, then we're not going to be able to use our thrusters or use our light that we have equipped. And obviously, um, you know, with the light on, it draws more power than the light off. So there is some resource management that has to be done in order to survive. So Commander, it, I cannot access the station's computer. You will need to download the logs manually for further analysis. So resource management is important. And uh, she, the, uh, the artificial intelligence 
that is built into our suit is telling us that we need to check the uh, the computers as well so we are going to do that but first I want to collect some other modules here real quick because as you can see those bars on the right are constantly going down so in the very beginning it's kind of a game of making sure that you have a enough of everything and you can see the planet there in the background um, eventually uh, we will ha gain access to a ship and be able to go down planet side but the first few uh, steps here is to get enough stuff to survive and then the uh, artificial intelligence kind of walks us through what needs to be done so the basic premise here is our uh, space station has crashed and uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on The controls have a very uh, floaty kind of feel. Um, it's not full Newtonian physics, but it is close. Um, when you move your mouse, for example, it is applying a force in that direction multiplied by how fast you are turning the mouse or the, the speed. So it's a little tricky to control but that is intentional it's supposed to be um, something that takes a little bit of practice to do and it's one of those kind of things that small inputs are better rather than large inputs if you go that route you can overcompensate and it'll be a lot harder because you're you're essentially fighting the controls at that point and one of the things I'm trying to do here is not use uh, the flashlight unless I really need to since that does drain more battery power. We have plenty of RCS fuel now. If you're uh, wondering where this music is coming from, my son has composed and written most of it. There's only just a few songs that I think that I have done, and he has just done a wonderful job. I could have not, I couldn't have done the music without him. You know, this very simple game. I mean, even though this is very simple um, compared to a lot of the AAA games that you get today, um, you would be surprised at how much actually went into getting to this point to where we have um, you know, some solid gameplay mechanics as far as movement and having a user interface that we can interact with and having all of the sounds and everything play and everything all of the systems all of the state states of all the objects up know all update correctly I mean there's quite a lot that goes into that unity does a good job to you know streamline a lot of it uh, for example I don't have to create um, the physics you know I basically just tell it that this level that we're in for lack of a better word is does not have any gravity and uh, any kind of physics that I do uh, compensates for that. So. Checking manifest. The following resources were on board prior to explosion. Suit oxygen, RCS fuel and power modules. There were also two rifles and eight clips of ammunition. Manifest okay. logs show manual ship detachment and all escape pods jettisoned. 
it appears prisoner 224 was awakened first, not due to emergency protocol but via manual override from an unknown source. It appears the station's course was manually set to these coordinates. The navigation computer may tell us more. Alright, so let's check the other navigation computer. Navigation computer shows prisoner 224 set the course to this unknown system and then turned all auto guidance systems off. The station launched an emergency beacon in response after his escape but due to mechanical failure the beacon was not activated. Commander we have limited supplies and no ship. Activate the emergency beacon for rescue. Alright, so our next goal is to activate the emergency beacon, so it'll hail uh, a nearby ship to come rescue us. Of course, you know it's not going to be that easy. And I know this is kind of shallow um, events that are kind of strung together. Like I said, it is pre-alpha and a lot of this stuff is placeholder. It's more about um, me just learning how to work within the uh, the development that uh, Unity gives us. So we've clicked on the beacon. You can see the appropriate sound has played, and uh, it's kind of turned Commander, red. I sense a ship heading to our current location. The ship is not transmitting the universal peace code, nor is it attempting to hail us. It is considered dangerous with malicious intent. Extreme caution is warranted. Okay, so uh, our little plan backfired. Um, we have there was a ship nearby, but it looks like it might be pirates. So we're going to uh, make sure we have everything we need to effectively deal with that. And with any kind of luck will be able to steal their ship. Assuming that we kill everyone on board, of course. We do not see where the ship is, nor do we know which direction it's coming in. That's part of the fun. Since I uh, designed this, I of course know exactly where it's where it's going to be and where it's going to spawn, and uh, that actually gives me a little bit of a, an advantage. Um, I've had uh, several members of my family play through this and um, it proved quite difficult for them uh, just with the Newtonian controls, the dark scene, uh, the management of the resources, and now you have bad guys that you have to kill on top of it. It, it proved to be a little too difficult. In fact, I don't think any of my friends that I've given uh, copies of this too has actually made it down to the planet surface, but uh, this is a walkthrough, so I'm going to show you everything that we have. I do have a um, some administrative admin tools. Uh, we can hit tilde and we can teleport around to teleport to different levels. I can spawn objects, but uh, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to play through the game as it is intended to be played. see that ship coming in. I'm going to turn the sound effects. I'm going to adjust the uh, sound effects volume. You notice that that menu does not pause the game. Um, that was something I was going to initially do. 
but uh, I kind of decided against it because the goal is for this to be a multiplayer game. You can see we have our first enemy here who is taking 25% of our health. Um, I've dropped health and ammo on all of the NPCs to make it a little bit more palatable since uh, we are definitely outnumbered. So I will loot this guy, get some health, get some bullets, and we got a power pack here so we'll pick that up as well. Let's see if we can find some other bad guys. The AI is pretty simple in this first implementation. It's basically they're using a, a uh, range, so there's a, an imaginary bubble around them, if you will. And uh, if the distance between us and them intersects that bubble, then they are aware of our location and come and attack us. And there are certain things that will uh, increase that bubble. Um, one is if I turn on my flashlight. Um, secondly, if I fire my gun, um, that will also increase my range. So he's notified of our presence probably because I turned on the flashlight. But uh, if you're out of their range, you can kind of pull them like you can do in other games where you're out of their range. They don't see you, but you see them. So, of course, once you start attacking, uh, they immediately know your location, know where you're coming from. But there aren't any advanced uh, AI um, tactics. They don't, they don't run for cover. They don't call for reinforcements or any of that kind of jazz. Like I said, this is a uh, first implementation with a lot of things being placeholder, including the death animations. I think you notice them like stumbling back. That's not what you would find in space at all. So, like I said, this is a pre-alpha 003. So let's go ahead and get in the ship, see if we can get down to the planet. Pilot key code accepted. All systems online. Controls free and clear. Setting course for the nearest planet. Commander, I agree with the ship's navigation computer. We are low on fuel and need to land. Perhaps on the planet we can find further resources. Just to give you an example of the mechanics in play here, what's kind of going on behind the scenes. Um, when the player gets close to the ship, what I do is I attach the player as far as the hierarchy to the ship's hierarchy. That way when the ship moves, the player moves. Um, I'm also changing the camera from the player's perspective to uh, the cockpit here in the ship. And I also make the player invisible when this is happening, so it appears that they get inside the ship. Um, those are one of the, you know, writing, programming games is a lot like solving problems. Um, you just have to think about the best and way to, to go about things. And that example may not be the best way to do it, but we are... Now entering the planet's atmosphere, I have a placeholder entry effect here, and it's loading the next scene. Uh, Unity is doing that in the background, so I learned how to asynchronously load. we are low on fuel. There is a small abandoned landing pad on a nearby island. I have added marker LZ-01 to your heads-up display. Commander, I'm also sensing a disabled satellite nearby. There should be a small access terminal on the back side of it. We might be able to activate the satellite for rescue. Alright, so we've been given our next objective. Um, the first is to land on this little platform. We got a little waypoint for that. And then after that, there's a satellite that we need to uh, get some coordinates from. 
and uh, what I've done here is, you know, there's nothing fancy going on here. You know, a lot of games have procedural generation and that sort of thing, and I certainly plan to do some of that, but just as a test bed and a prototype, this is just a simple scene um, using some terrain that's based off of a height map. Um, it's actually split into different sections uh, to get the size that I needed. I've also placed some trees and some grass and some you know what I'll call POIs or points of interest to check out and do. See if I can gracefully put this thing down on the ground. Well, not too bad. Got a nice effect there. I think I want to hide my interface, take a screenshot of that. We'll pull up the uh, FPS counter to watch our frames, and you can see that, uh, as expected, this is certainly not optimized. Unity just came out with a new uh, entity uh, component system, which is supposed to improve frames greatly like all these trees are actual individual game objects that are all animating and, and uh, moving on their own I decided to take my helmet off since we can breathe and uh, for example if you know you have too many trees it slows your frames down and what ECS does from what I understand my very limited understanding of it is is instead of all those trees being individual game objects I can have uh, I can have them be represented as entities and have one job system there's a guy up there have you know a single job system that controls got him in the animation and all of that for it. All of these assets that you see here are just free assets that are available. Satellite enabled. Incoming transmission. Wanted, criminal known as Cato. His crimes include disrupting communications, freeing prisoners, hacking, murder, theft and fraud. 500,000 credits and transfer to any system for his death. End transmission. Commander, looks like Cato is our ticket out of here. I'm picking up a signal which might be their base not too far from here. I have added a marker to your heads up display. Alright, looks like we have a crash ship. Let's go check it out. And that is obviously a bug. Um, it's the first time I've seen that. I'm not really sure. 
uh, why that's happening. I don't think that happened during a previous playthrough, but that's all about what game development is about. There's so much work that goes into this, just like those boxes you saw me blow up. You know, it's an actual game object that has to be, you know, when you click on it, it gets destroyed and replaced uh, by a bunch of shards that uh, then respond to the physics and just kind of go everywhere and then I spawn whatever is inside them. And one of the cool things you can do with Unity is you can expose your scripts on the directly that are that are on the game objects. So you can you can kind of extend the editor to do things. So like I can clone that box inside the editor, place it a bunch of different places. Um, and then, you know, that box could, those boxes could have ammo in them, they could have health in them. Oh, there's another guy. There's some wonky uh, death stuff going on there. I think what's happening is, um, when the NPC is killed, it turns into a rigid body. So even though the death animation plays, uh, the physics can make them do kind of some weird stuff so I think what I need to do to fix that is to actually make them uh, non-kinematic so that they're not affected by physics at all um, so there basically is no rigid body and uh, just play the death animation and, and make it so that they can't be moved but I think the reason why I had it set like that, I was originally playing around with doing like some ragdoll physics and some stuff like that. Nice! Got him and he fell off. So like that was something that was non-scripted, right? I mean, I just shot him, um, the death animation played, and he fell backwards and basically he fell off. There's another guy over here that I saw, I thought, out of the corner of my eye. Maybe not. Oh, there he is. can see that we have a whole base full of guys and ideally you know if you were shooting people this far away they would know and they would take cover and you know all those kind of things but like I said this is just uh, a very first early look I'm noticing that some of the animations aren't playing right either like uh, they're in a squat and they're just moving they should be they should be running towards you. See, like, he's running towards me, but that other guy didn't. So that's one of the things that can be aggravating, is you can have a, uh, a bug that doesn't happen every time. That's another example of the uh, physics not working right. He was supposed to take explosion damage. Worked in the editor, not really sure why it's not working now. That door moves up a little too quick. I need to change that. Slow that animation down.
I have like a rectangular kill box around the NPCs. It's one of the things that you learn when you start programming is you learn things like hitbox, kill box. And all it really is is just a way to for example, when I aim my gun, what it's really doing Warning. is RCS thrusters are low. I know. RCS thrusters offline. When I go to shoot my gun, what it's doing is it's shooting a ray trace out the barrel of the gun. Which is think of that as an invisible line. And if that invisible line intersects um the NPC sneaky little thing you see he kind of clipped through the wall there anyways if it intersects then there's a function that's called with a script that's attached to that NPC called do damage <laughs> that was a major glitch from the perfect headstand to boot. So anyways, uh, I have learned a lot and uh, you can see that this is obviously not ready for uh, people to play, but I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And uh, if you want to see some more videos on Project X, let me know. If uh, you have any questions, uh, let me know as well. I'd be happy to answer any that you have.